Hi guys, this is me, Productors View, and today I am. This is my content entry into the Cosmo World War Reenactors Actors contest. And I got back from War and Peace yesterday, so I got a bunch of new stuff. So this is sort of an update of what I've got as well. I did do a video on what I got, but and this is just like an update on my game when I put everything. So, um, yes, this video is probably going to be in two parts because you know, just to make it easy to upload and stuff. But so, yeah, so first of all, I am part of the 101st Airborne Division. But I do have an 80 second patch because, as I've said before, when I bought my jump jacket, uh, this patch is on, on it. So um, I do have a patch here. It's probably, I have 200 percent on patches. So I've got to stick a 100 percent airborne patch there. Oh, so on. Um, but, yeah, so I suppose it's 100 first. But I don't really know what part of 100 first I'm going to be uh, because, you know, I'm not joining me that group or anything. So I'm not, I'm not really too sure, but. Yeah, so first of all, um, here I have my M1 carbine, original deactivated, original sling, uh, original pouch here, has two mags in, I haven't actually put the mag in the M1 carbine, let me just... There we go, so that would be like that. Um, I, have my I always carry a copy of my deactivation certificate in there as well, just in case somebody asks. Yeah, it's quite hard to seal that up with a good one. But um, it was mainly officers and NCOs who carried M1 carbines. Like, Browning machine gunners carried them as well. Because, uh, you know, it's smaller. Because they were also carrying the Browning. Uh, but other soldiers did have them as well. But, you know, mainly officers and NCOs. As, as I said, there was a few exceptions. But it was normally the folding stock one. But these ones, M1 carbine. So M1 carbine, M M1A1 carbine was one that folded so um yeah but the m1a1 carbine was a falling stock and this m1 carbine is not falling stock but um these are the ones that were in jeeps and vehicles you know they were clipped into the under the windscreen of a jeep so um yeah that's my weapon i also have a homemade thompson but that's not for really and then i'm just gonna quickly show i have my horse hard gloves here repro um you know they're just basic gloves also my impression is a couple of days after d-day so 7th 8th and 9th of june um headwear i have my new uh, m2 helmet original shell and original wooden bit of the liner but this straps and everything are all repro so the guy redid it so he redid the outside as well it's got all the straps and everything and he redid the outside, recorked it, repainted it and everything, but it's the original shell. And um, I think it's, it's kind of what he said now, but it is rear seam. Where is it? Rear seam, I'm not, I can't really find it at the moment, but yeah. That's, oops. <laughs> that's headwear. Um, I have my M42 jumpsuit on. I have my trousers here, reinforced. Uh, reinforced, and re they weren't actually, didn't actually come reinforced to the soldiers, but... The airborne realised after Italy and Sicily landings, like the jumping into that, these pockets and everything seem to, these ones down here seem to rip anything on the landing and everything. Oh yeah, also. And I do have my cricket. I have a spare one there, but it's kind of broken. So my cricket, I should probably just put it around my neck, but you know. Yeah, so after the, after like the jump to Sis, in Sicily and Italy, the paratroopers realised that these pockets and everything seem to rip. So on like the nights of D Day and everything, they reinforce them, and they don't want to trap. They reinforce the uh, the knees as well. So that's a bit about the jump jack jumpsuit and why it's now reinforced and everything. Some soldiers also sewn an extra patch on here. Um, I don't have my gas brass side on because. Uh, I would take mine off because in World War II, it was against the Geneva Conventions to use gas. I think it was. Was it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was against the Geneva Conventions to use gas. Um, but yeah. Uh, footwear. I have my cork and jump boots. Or reset boots or whatever they are. As well, you know. I believe they put you could put spikes in these bits here. Um, that's just my guess because it's like holes there. Like books, or something. Um, 
And yeah, so now on to the webbing. So I have my M, wait, is it M36? Yeah, <laughs> M36 pistol belt and M36 suspenders. On the front of my pistol belt, I have a another carbine pouch. Uh, oh yeah, I also forgot. I have my uh, combat scarf there that they cut off the parachutes. Not everyone had them because I didn't have time to cut off the parachute. I also, here I have my first aid, airborne first aid. I'm trying to get, that, that, that light's getting a bit annoying, isn't it? Yeah, so I have my airborne first aid, M36 suspenders. Um, yeah, so I have my, I have a car line pouch here. I uh, don't have anything in it. I'm probably just going to put some wooden blocks in there or something just to, you know. Here I have a rigger pouch. I normally put, if I'm not using it, I have put my uh, combat scarf in there. All my horse side gloves in there, I'm not using them. But also, for film props, I keep some stuff. That's in there. And then, moving around. Hang on, let me just the camera a bit for the weapon. Okay, moving around, I have my... Uh, Colt uh, holster. Hang on, let me put the camera down a bit more. <laughs> yeah, so I have my Colt holster right here. I ain't got a Colt. Um, I'm probably going to be buying one. Don't know when. But hopefully, I'll be buying one. That's one of the next things I've got on my list. Um, I have my Carl Arabanda's pouch. You know, it's not where I'd really like it to be. I kind of like it near the front, but you want to have your ammo near the front, mainly, and your pistol and everything. Because it is quite hard to get out, and you really might need it quite often, but it's not quite where I'd like it. But, um, yeah, I've got that there. Uh, going around to the side, I have my T-handle shovel. The uh, T-handle shovel and the M43 um, folding uh, shovel. Uh, I have the T-handle shovel, but the folding shovel was better because uh, at the start the handle wasn't as long so it didn't get in the way so that would be harder for digging but um, because of the T at the end when you landed sometimes it would like digging dig into nothing so the folding shovel was actually the best out of the two because if you landed funny on this one it's going to hurt but you're not really going to land funny on the folding one because the, the uh, handle doesn't go down as far uh, yeah, and then here I have my water bottle and I have my Musette bag. I have reinforced my Musette bag. I'm not reinforced it. <laughs> camouflage it because it's one of the biggest things I need to camouflage it maybe. And this is what the soldiers did. They camouflaged it with paint. I've done my own paint as well. And um, basically, yeah, so it's kind of just like stripes. And it's showing me these bits as well. And basically, uh, they camouflage. I'm going to take this off. They camouflaged it, um, what was I going to say, oh yeah, they camouflaged it uh, on like the night because the jump got p postponed 24 hours, so they had time to do stuff and just, you know, camouflaged it and reinforced everything and made it sit in this pocket. And, um, yeah, I don't really carry much in these pockets at the moment, in fact, I don't carry anything apart from, and this one is like, most of what I was saying, um, you know, I don't carry anything in my pockets at the moment. Because, you know, I don't have that much like, ammunition or anything to put in my pockets. Um, but, yeah. Also, I forgot I have my felt pads as well. Um, you know, just for comfort. They're right, they, make things, they make it a lot comfier. Um, because, like, these hooks here on the Musette bag, they dig into you sometimes. You have a lot of them in the Musette bag. So they dig into your shoulders. But, you know, they don't need more because I've got the felt pads on. But yeah, I think that's um, all. I can do a video on what I have in my Musette bag if you want me to, guys. Um, I'm just gonna... There we go. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, just doing a review. Well, not a review, a little, like, little. So, um... Yeah, guys, this is my entry into Cosmo World War One Actors contest. Um, it's probably in two parts, as I said, but I don't know. And also, I've just got to wait a second, guys. Um, here's my old helmet. I'm just going to quickly, you know, my old helmet, my Vietnam helmet. You know, it, there isn't actually much difference apart from the straps and the liner. 
there isn't much difference between the Vietnam helmet, and, like on the outside. Um, but this is mine. And, you know, could do that, but the only time I did that on the jump, really, because it just sounds a lot a bit annoying. So the only really did that on the jump. And um, you guys, so this is all for this video. I think I've covered everything. Let um, me just. Yeah, I've covered everything. Um, so, yeah, guys, rate, comment, subscribe for more. And uh, yeah, this has been my ending the uh, Cosmo World War Reenactors contest. I think, is that it? Cosmo World War Reenactors? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, contest. And yeah, guys, so. If you want to see what's in my music bag, then just, you know, put it in the comments. I can do a video on that. I can do a video on South Beast and my equipment. If you want me to, guys, put it in the comments as well. Um, and... Cover everything. Yeah, guys. See you guys in the video. Make sure to subscribe. No, no. That, that, that doesn't go with that, I think. No. But, yeah, guys. So, um, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the video. Bye.